if you're not feeling great, LA is not a place to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Because every time we go into a shop, people say, how are you, how are you doing? How are mm -hmm. you doing today? How are you doing today? They don't say hello. There was a time when I just thought, how can I, can I keep on doing this? This has taken a huge toll on my relationships, on my health. I was like probably drinking too much, staying up too late, stressed, lack of sleep. It's not healthy. Hello, my fellow leaders. Greetings from sunny Brazil. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. This summer, I'm doing a little experiment, doing short clips of past conversations that resonated with me. And this week, I revisit my conversation with Bill Bailey, a stand-up comedian who is one of the funniest British comedians of our time, but also one of the most brilliant and versatile performers. He's a stand-up comedian, actor, skilled musician, and author, having written several books, including Bill Bailey's Remarkable Guide to Happiness. Oh, and dancer, having won Strictly Come Dancing in 2020 with his dance partner, Oti Mabusi. In this week's episode, we go beyond the laughs, as Bill explores about the hardships that he's endured, living hand to mouth, and experiencing one of the biggest losses in his life. If you're struggling with life's uncertainties, grief, or just feeling like life is unpredictable, then this episode is for you. Please make sure to follow or subscribe to the show wherever you're listening. Here, I kick off by quoting Bill's book about happiness and asking him about the hardships he has endured. In your book, you say hardship is not just something that you might overcome to be happy. It's a necessity, a yardstick by which to measure the good times, mm. which is so true. And what hardships have you endured and what did they teach you? Starting out, that was there was a long period where it was uh, just tough to live, tough to make plans. You know, I was living hand to mouth you know, um, you earn money from a gig, but it's just enough to get you through the week. So then you have to do another gig and there's no time to plan. You can't really make any plans. And it was fun, but it was also quite relentless. Um, and there was a time when I just thought, how can I, can I keep on doing this? I mean, really, this is, this is sustainable. Am I, this is what I'm going to be doing now for, I've been doing it for a few years and I was like, I don't know whether I can keep doing this. This has taken a huge toll on my, you know, the, like relationships, on just on my health. You know, I was like probably drinking too much, staying up too late, eating late, you know, traveling, driving a lot, stressed, you know, lack of sleep. It's not healthy. And then, and so what I did was I took a big risk and then, put a show together and took it to the Edinburgh Festival and put all my money into this show. And that, reaped a huge amount of rewards it was a it was a big punt it was a big risk but from that a lot of other good things happened um and also i think um you know when i'd say it wasn't pretty hard really hardship but maybe it was a big loss when i lost my mother my mother died for 15 odd years ago now and she died relatively young i mean she was in her early 70s which okay, it's not young, but it's not these by these days. It's not you know. It, it felt like you know. It felt like she too was soon. too soon. Yeah, and so that was a that was a big kind of it was a big loss. I really felt that you know, and um, it uh, I probably think pretty it was it took me a while to get over you know, because I sort of, you know, I still miss her now. And she was the life and soul. She was a great force of energy. And, uh, you know, she was a real in, in, instrumental in me playing the piano. She encouraged me. She was always a sort of someone you can, you know, who would inspire, push you to do things. She was a, she was a great force, you know, and, and when she went, it was a bit. It was like a big gap, you know. And I, and I sort of think about it now, and it's it's been a long time since, you know. But my dad, my dad's now ninety, you know. And I think he's, you know, he's been on his own now for years as a result. So it was a big loss. But yeah, um, and then I guess um, 
you know, I think loss is is why I equate with that. You know, you mm. you kind of you find a you know ways of dealing with it. But yeah, it's it's How tough. How long did it take you? Because you said she passed away fifteen years ago. Yeah. How long do you feel it took you to feel okay with it? To process it. Um, well, it, I think grief is a very odd thing. It's it affects people in different ways. You know, it it sometimes it doesn't manifest itself straight away. And it, it you you you're sort of you cauterize yourself to it, you know, and you 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 kind of deal with the practicalities, and then it will just come back somewhere somehow, completely out of the blue. Mm -hmm. It could be anything. It could be a you know piece of music. It could be a sensation, a taste, a look, a certain place that you're in, that 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 somehow triggers this memory, and the memory is is sometimes overwhelming, and that happened to me. With my mum when um, and she died and and I you know was dealing with it with my dad and we sorted out some practicalities and and then a year later of all places I was in uh, L.A. and I was doing a show <laughs> and um, and honestly I mean this is I would say if you if you're not feeling great L.A. is not a place to be <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, because every time we go into a shop, people say, "How are you? How are you doing? How are you doing today? How are you doing today?" They don't say hello, mm -hmm. like in a shop in the, you know in, in the UK. Or so anywhere. keep your business to yourself. Yeah, it's like you yeah. know, right? You mm -hmm. know, you go into a shoe shop. They don't go, "Hey, how are you doing?" They just go, "What do you want?" You know, in LA, how are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Relentless, and then then I cracked. I was I was in a I was in some shop, some deli or something. And I just cracked, and they said, "How are you doing?" I said, "Well, I'm not really doing that well, to be honest." <laughs> I was like, mm. "This is like the last thing they wanted to hear." They, they were like, "I don't really want to know how you're doing." Mm. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, you a know, polite, just a hello. polite hello. Mm -hmm. But I just went, "No, I'm really not doing that well." I said, "I'm really, I mean, I lost my mum a year ago, and I'm really doing." <laughs> and you can see, you can see them like thinking, "Okay, we get it." You know, they were like looking around for security, you know. And it really, I don't know, just all came out then mm -hmm. and um, it was really quite overwhelming I think because you know of all the things that you think about in just the, the year to process it all and, um, and I think also because you know we had just had a child who so you know it was and he I was so grateful that she'd seen our you know our son you know, so she knew she was a, a grandma, you know, so that was a big thing. Mm -hmm. And all of that came because he was with us and all the memories of that, you know, came up. So I think that, I think, yes, I mean, I've been very lucky. I have never forget that I've been very fortunate, you know, that I've been quite lucky in my career. I've always, you know, I, I work always. I mean, I always have been working. I've always made work for myself. So I've always earned money, enough money to kind of keep things going. So I've never, you know, it's never been hardship in that sense. But I think that yes, moments of loss are one are the ones that um, that really stand out. A lot of it is is psychological, and the loss of someone that you love is mm. so deep. And I mean, for me, obviously, I've lost my mum, my stepfather, you know, quite closely together, mm. and they were both very young. And going, just accepting the fact that you are no longer a child when you lose a parent. Mm. I think that has been something that's difficult to yes. to process. But um, but yeah, I mean, we all get affected by different things. But for sure, like losing someone is is yeah. is tough. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I lost a very good friend of mine last year, uh, comedian Sean Long, and uh, we were very close, and we we we'd been close for years, mm -hmm. and it was. One of those things that a friendship that you think will last and for the rest of our lives. And when he died, it was very much like, oh, how, how am I going to, you know, share? He was like, you know, my closest friend. And mm. I, you'd share things, you'd ask for advice. It was like, a, you know, someone to rely on. And that's now he's, apart from the loss of him as a, a great comedian, a great friend, it's almost mm. like I've lost a, a bit of my, you know, 
mooring. You know, I mean, I had someone to to kind of keep me right. I'd phone him and say, "What do you think of this?" And he would give me great advice. And I'd go, mm-hmm. "Okay, yeah." And, and having that taken away, it's a, that's a big that's a big loss. Mm. You know, it's just not having control over it. It's yeah. just something that happens to you that you just yeah you can't you control just, it. You don't you don't decide when that happens and how it happens. No. Yeah. But actually, Sean, he would say to me this. He was he was a great one for the Greek philosophers. He read, you know, very widely, and he, this thing he said to me, which which has always stayed with me and will always stay with me. And he said that there's nothing much we can do about life, but the one thing that we can control is how we feel about it. You know, things happen to us beyond our control, and there's no way we can predict what's going to happen. But what we can do is we can control the way we deal with it we can try and you know that's the one thing that we have control over how we feel about it how we deal with it that was bill bailey stand-up comedian actor author i've been your host maria vorostovsky and i really hope you've enjoyed this short clip if you haven't already hit that subscribe or follow button and i'll see you next week 